So when I'm looking at that, you see them too. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that we that we come back to our community, and uh, I believe the first topic that we will discuss is good to review what we'll miss uh, during the last couple of months. Um, yeah, and uh, a couple of words about nowadays. So hope we all do our best on our places, and I believe we already adapt and take uh, like the best options with the, how we can support our country, our guys on the front. And uh, I believe that we should continue to improve our skills and do our job as best as we can. I hope we agree. So yeah, and uh, small disclaimer as today will be like open discussion about updates. I'm open to any question in any time, just interrupt and ask your questions. So as agenda today, I'm going to briefly overview these articles, most of them that was released since uh, February 24, I believe, but maybe some of them was released earlier, but was announced only after that day. So yeah, I believe uh, many of us missed uh, this information, especially in first weeks of war, uh, because we was definitely focusing on other things. And uh, I believe uh, this is a huge gap for us as technology continue growing and community continue develop uh, go ecosystem widely in different directions. And today I will try to focus mostly on updates in the language, some updates and our use that was released. I believe it, as for me, it looks like some band going on and I see a lot of new information regarding changes in the language, changing in the tool sets, new approaches. And uh, it's one like um, piece of information. And another one is more, um, more deep dive overview of some technology as a implementation on Go. And you may like get more familiar how to use them, how they work. Uh, I believe Go is amazing tool, amazing language that's help you to understand technology better than just reading the specification. Okay, so uh, first uh, article, it's pretty huge. Actually, I have it open in my uh, another screen. Mm, it worth reading because as we may see, it uh, authored by five men that's three of them are like authors of Go and two of them is pretty close to, <laughs> to the authors because Russ Cox was, um, I'm not sure it was like um, summer activity for the students and actually Raskox was first engineer who implements uh, Go compiler and all these tricks that belong to the specification. And Jan Weiss Taylor is first who develop a compiler from GCC based on the specification and now they both like uh, work hardly in the Go team. And these articles actually um, make a huge overview. It's, for me, it looks like a scientific article. It's used a lot of reference, uh, a lot of different links to different studies and make uh, an overview of the language for the last decade, I believe for, since beginning. And I remember Ivan Denlik already uh, have this reference when he presents the Go language for, for our community like six years ago, maybe seven years ago. I don't actually remember these days. Yeah, so um, in the articles, you may find information on the origins, what was the main drivers of creation of the language, uh, why some um, decision was made regarding organization or structure that package is the main like, uh, bricks in the language about the type system why uh, strongly typed language is better why we cannot just simply convert simply convert between in types why is there a difference about concurrency model about ideas how we can utilize uh, more cores in our computers and uh, help to optimize um, our programs uh, and dealing with different blocking operation like input output operation, 
etc. How we can use resources efficiently and actually concurrent is all about that. Uh, security and safety uh, is more about built-in language uh, property. It's like boundary checks, it's type conversion, it's pointer arithmetics. All it was like uh, dramatically closest from the OS engineers and we unable to mess with this stuff yeah because when we work on vc we definitely may like fail it is that what is left for example and what was not handled is um, integer overflow for example when uh, we use like int 8 or int 16 yeah it may overflow and uh, circuit the numbers it may lead to some bugs in our system so be careful with with numbers and check the boundaries of the numbers to avoid like overflow in this. Uh, what else? Also, memory management, as we know, we don't play with it. It's all garbage collected and it's under the runtime like uh, responsibility. Completeness is uh, more about uh, ecosystem, language itself, library, all tool sets that goes uh, from the box. And it's very tricky to achieve it because we need to balance between like uh, things that's ready to use on the start and amount of software that team should uh, maintain over the years. And you know, if we like add more standard libraries, it's become harder to maintain them. That's why this principle to minimize the efforts and uh, pay attention only to those things that's really important to the business. And I believe it's a very nice driver for technology. And actually, um, I believe one of the driver was of the gold language itself was to focus more on the optimization of the process of the development rather than um, just create a new language and provide a new tool for solving the problem. So the main goal to solve the problem of the software creation process itself so it's a very nice focus and change and explain a lot of diff different things and different decisions that was made by the authors consistency is about behavior and uh, you know when you work with go a lot it's very um, easy to predict how your code will behave you can read the code base and you already got the mental model of your program and you can predict how it behaves and uh, for that reason especially as example uh, the behavior of ordering inside the map you know that it's like um, non-deterministic is because of hessian function hessian function behave differently based on the different architecture and to avoid such gap uh, uh, developer of the land which like uh, implement this algorithm to um, random ordering in the map and that's only one thing that we cannot predict and it's like some kind of inconsistency in the behavior but we know about that and we design our program based on that uh, tool aided development again since the, the beginning uh, during the working on the prototype there were a lot of different tools that help a community to adopt new changes for example if some changes in the language where it's not uh, like solid uh, appear uh, there's some uh, rewrites in tool uh, in the code base are required and uh, that's why we have this tool and call it uh, go fix it all easily change the uh, code base and adopt to the new um, version of the language and I believe it was since the beginning and we have go found and other tools like we have people that help with testing we have testing itself like built in and uh, right now we have much more tools that help us to do our stuff and again tools was introduced because it helped to optimize develop process and in the big teams in the production systems Optimization is very important. That's why tools was one of the core feature of Go ecosystem itself. And of course, libraries. Uh, again, I already mentioned that it's 
very hard to maintain this balance between uh, completeness of the libraries and uh, the size of maintainable code base that's easy or like uh, real to support by the Go team itself or by the community. So we know that we have around 145 standard packages and uh, from the recent release, a couple of new was added, but again, it's very minimal and with necessary functionality on it. Especially we can build uh, like I, I build pretty huge number of solution based only on standard library. It's very easy. Uh, it may be not optimal in terms of performance or memory or timing latency, for example, but it does their job very well and we may rely on that and taking uh, an example for example uh, <laughs> take an example of api development uh, see this principle of minimalistic api uh, minimal necessary function etc okay so i encourage you to review this uh, article take your time grab a cup of tea and enjoy the reading i it's really excited to see all these details with examples, with explanation, with reference to the studies, etc. Any questions so far? Okay, I assume no. Uh, next, uh, as you know, uh, since recent version uh, 1.18 of Go, we have generic insight. And there are a lot of uh, articles, videos, introduction to this problem. Uh, I believe we also have a like, couple of presentation in our community as well, so feel free to review them and adapt. Uh, and a lot of engineers that now already try to adopt these approaches in uh, their life. It's not easy. I believe I can count five or seven articles uh, for the last 10 weeks that was like, dedicated to this uh, topic. And yeah, uh, this one is pretty light. It uh, take an example of the queue system. So we introduce new queue type with uh, queues that can handle any value inside, any type inside, and how we can uh, adopt it. Yeah, so in these solutions with small, tiny code examples, you go one by one from the problem, solution, uh, possible constraints, uh, reviewing type safety checks, uh, reviewing different, actually three use cases of generics when we need it. Um, also discuss possible implementation, how it could be done. For example, two of them, you know, virtual message table, when we, um, it's also like, name it is dynamic uh, dynamical type it, it's how interfaces work inside go based so we don't generate additional code instead we generate in memory reference and use them but it's require additional performance like uh, penalty in our system uh, and monophilization is when we auto generate code for all necessary types but but when our generics is too generic for example based on type n so satisfy any types it's require a lot of code generation and actually go implementation um, use hybrid solution so it use both of them from one point it, it's uh, compiled will generate uh, prepared function but this fun those functions will be generated for the uh, certain group of type for example for integer for strings for pointers etc and uh, that will allow to minimize performance penalties from one point and from another one populate our code weight uh, our binary size too much especially it's light article it's very nice uh, quick introduction easy reading so gain you some knowledge about generics and how you can use them. I encourage you to review like all <laughs> generics related articles first when you before you start playing with that to get some wide understanding of this. Okay, another feature that's pop up presently in the Go to Cert Go ecosystem is Fizen. 
Um, Fizen is a part of uh, testing techniques uh, that I believe exist pretty long time, like as separate solution. Nitri Vyukov was the author of GoFast tool and introduced this approach in the community. And um, overall, Fizen is uh, approach when we uh, make some genetic, uh, apply some genetic algorithms for the testing. For example, we uh, define the function uh, similar to the tests, uh, define the input, like uh, uh, standard, I don't know how it's easy to explain. For example, we have some input as a source. It could be string, integer, or slice of bytes. It will be um, on Marshall in any structure, whatever. And then we send this input information to our functions that we're testing. And Python actually change each time, make a lot of iteration and change input uh, value based on the output of the function. Uh, that will help to spot some edge cases, for example, for unpredictable inputs information. And uh, actually Python we can like assume as three different approaches. For example, the best, uh, the basic one uh, is when we make some assertion. It's, as I, I described, we define the function, uh, uh, take input, send to our testing function, and uh, assert the output. Is it valid or not? And if it invalid, we'll like trigger an error, and we observe what actually information was sent, uh, and what. Uh, results we gain, what we expected. Uh, in the article, there was example with Bigo framework and the routing. There's some error inside the routing that was sketched by the Fizen. Uh, round trip Fizen uh, is applied when we have two function, for example, transformation from A to B and from B to A. So we can like uh, combine them from paths. We can uh, make uh, an input for one function and use output of this function for another function to check if our answer is valid. Again, we won't play with all this. It's help us to minimize um, test case for testing. It, it, it will generate it for us and that will help us to make sure that our solution is like robust. And the uh, differential uh, fuzzing is when we have two implementation of the same or similar functionality. Uh, that will help uh, again to compare of the implementation. We are able to like uh, see what of the implementation is wrong if we catch the error, but again, we'll see the difference and we can uh, debug this if it's happened. Okay, uh, so I encourage you to add fuzzing uh, inside your tests and use them. So take a look and again, in the article, there are like reference to more basic stuff. Uh, with Fizen, we have a lot of presentation, I believe, and instruction. There are also some guidelines from the Go itself. So we can find articles about Fizen on the uh, go.dev site, website blog. So take a look. Any questions so far? I see some methods in chat. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the links. Actually, all these uh, articles I grabbed from Golang Weekly, it's newsletters that generate like uh, each week. And I review for the last 10 weeks and pick more available from my standpoint articles and share it with you right now. Okay, move forward. Uh, go develop a survey. Uh, you know, like in the autumn, we have the survey. Uh, this time, uh, there are like 11,000 or nearly 12,000 participants in this survey. And uh, I just grabbed one, one of the outcomes of this uh, survey is uh, what technology is missing or more available for the community, for the engineers right now. And we saw that dependency management and uh, diagnosis bug is more valuable and more important right now. 
is based on the this survey and i believe go team will adjust the efforts and uh, vector of implementation on based on these results so uh, as a new in go team some analytical part also exists and they try to spot more important uh, like uh, direction of improving go technology on go ecosystem but again you i encourage you to review all this survey uh, it's very interesting in terms of how we growing how we change our community and of course participate in the next survey okay uh, so i believe uh, that was all about uh, articles that was reading and reviewing and the next uh, set of articles is more practical one i won't go with the detail with each of them uh just like a uh, small introduction and reviewing each of them so smtp protocol again uh, basic implementation with go um, encourage all of you who not familiar with these protocols to play with it it's like uh, very easy implementation with go code you get closer to this protocol knew how it works and go help you to like study it although it's amazing chance to do that um workspace uh i believe i was confused because workspace exists in my in my uh, like representation of go since the beginning but it's not about go pass it's more about modules so um right now we have uh new command uh, inside our tool set and this command will generate new file go work and this file will uh, help us to uh, interact or link between different modules and we'll use as definition of the workspace for tool set um, not sure that I explained it correctly so I encourage you to review <laughs> this feature and uh, apply in your daily routine as well. I believe it will be very handy. Uh, yeah, another article described again from scratch development of database. Uh, this time is document oriented, uh, but what is interesting is implementation of uh, filters, search, query, not only like storage part. So it will help you to understand more like uh, how the database work, what's like challenges there, and even how to implement it. Uh, another article is about TLS. Again, for those who are not familiar with uh, transport secure layer, uh, I encourage you to play with it. Again, as for my experience, when you try to implement something, you gain this knowledge and you understand how it works. Um, embedding NATS in Go, it's one of the implementation uh, for those of you who not have chance to work with SKUs, with NATS. Uh, it's a series of topics, how to start NATS with Kubernetes, how to integrate with Go, and one of them, how to integrate in Go. So it's also Mm, very interesting. And another one, Go documentary. It's new source. Uh, hope you continue to see my presentation on screen. Yeah. Uh, uh, Go on design history, as you see. And here we have like a lot of, it's about 700 different links for different speeches, talks, articles. I believe. It mostly like about talks, yeah, and some information. So if you want to find some information about Go, about implementation, or rela related stuff regarding Go ecosystem, you might find it here. Yeah, so it's one <laughs> good place. <laughs> Instead of using just plain Google, you may try like uh, use it, and it's already structured. As you see, we have like a huge uh like division here yeah and can instigate everything uh you may ask like loudly your question because uh switching to the chat it's not very easy for me right now oh, sorry i'm just dropping stuff 
Окей. Да. Don't mean to interrupt. Окей. Also with articles we have podcast. Podcast Go Time is also like a like weekly release. I encourage you to like review it. Uh, I'm mostly of them. I'm not able, like I'm not 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 able. I'm not listening yet, but I'm going to. And one of them, what I'm listening right now, is not analyzing static analysis. It's a very interesting approach when an engineer from the science uh, explain how meta programming works, and it's very like interesting for to see on this topic from different angle. Because right now, uh, when I'm asking about static analysis, everyone says like, just use Goang CI Mint. That's all. Why you <laughs> think about something <laughs> more complex? Yeah, and it's a tricky question because LinkedIn it's not like so obvious. It may uh, miss some parts. For example, how you will link like coupling issue or cohesion issue? How you measure them? So sometimes it's required to write your own uh, uh, linters, and this means familiar with uh, IST, for example. Yeah, I try to uh, code base tree, explain it in other words, to build it, to work with it, to analyze your code base properly, and uh, won't like consume too much memory or too much CPU, for example. Uh, instrumentation for gophers, it's more about uh, monitoring insights, metrics, and other tools that go around the production. Again, this very important topic, how organize uh, code base, uh, what best practice do we have in our community? Um, some stories about working with legacy code base when you have no change to like just go with greenfield uh, solution and you need to support and maintain uh, the solution uh, and also topics about uh, nicely generated output and working with common line so it's also possible there are a lot of different tools for that uh, mastering of Go, I'm not sure that I remember correctly on this topic about, I believe it's more insights from Go team, how they develop Go, but maybe I'm wrong here. Um, <laughs> this, this next topic about login itself. So what actually we have with a different log solution. Uh, again, topic regarding database, I believe there are a number of them. If we will review like list of uh, podcasts, existing podcasts already, and uh, go with GraphQL. For the recent uh, couple recent months, I observed that more and more services switch to GraphQL and start service uh, servicing with uh, this protocol. Okay, so. Any questions and proposition from your site? And you know, if you want to propose something, I will ask you. <laughs> I have my own prepared questions. This, these are proposals for the group, for the Go group that we have here, or? Yeah, yeah, it, it's just question to you. Any any question from your site, any proposal, suggestion, how we can improve or change something in our community? like. Sure. Right now we open to discuss. Okay, uh, my question is: Do we have like something like a uh, uh, a list of topics, or actual uh, actually not a list of topics, but yeah, just uh, uh, overall, yeah, the topics basically. We, we do have. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that that people can yeah they can uh, basically upvote or downvote so that we know what's more interesting mm -hmm. for the community mm -hmm. here. I, okay. I, I believe we can rise one more time this pooling or like introduce new one because uh, the original one was like introduced a couple of years ago and it's very like uh, you know, high level explanation for example let's discuss some architecture or some technology or some use case from your project experience for example and I believe it's very wide variety of the topics there 
but uh, my main proposition and advice when it came to the question what topic better to like uh, explore and present to the community uh, i advise to focus on your own experience what was more available for you for the like recent couple of weeks and you like uh, feel this wow effect from when you discover that <laughs> this is how it's work is the best options to present to the community okay yeah makes sense yeah i i agree also that uh, i mean uh, in the company that i previously worked in um we had this list and it actually worked but i think i agree with you i think the at some point more uh concrete examples are probably more interesting actually you do really cases, depends. yeah <laughs> because uh, you drill down into the details and the devil is in the details as you know so mm -hmm. it's more interesting and more focused yep okay any other questions <laughs>